Hello, Real Life Church. I am Jason and this is Lacey. We are worship leaders at Real Life Church and we want to share with you this Good Friday on the crucifixion. So the verse that I want to read to you is Matthew 27 and it's verses 50 through 54. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and he yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of, of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the son of God. I think one of the most interesting things about this passage is the splitting of things. So we see that the curtain of the temple was torn in two, and it was torn even from top to bottom. And the, the curtain in the temple was a very thick curtain, probably like four inches thick, that was pr uh, between the regular part of the temple and the place called the Holy of Holies, which is where the presence of God was and the priests were only allowed to go in there once a year. Um, and they had all these rituals that they had to perform before they could even go in or the presence of God would strike them dead. And so Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. And when he died on the cross, the temple curtain was torn in two because the holy, the, the holy presence of the Lord couldn't just stay in there anymore. Because, you know, because of Jesus, now the dwelling of God is with man. And he has come to basically break open our, our stony hearts and, and come and be a presence and fill us with, um, with his Holy Spirit, fill us with life. He's come to give us life and give it abundantly. And the other thing that was split on that day were rocks and, and, and the literal earth. And so Jason's going to talk about how another in another part of the Bible there is a rock that split and how that's significant yeah so um, if you have your Bibles you can turn with me we're actually going to go back and um, this is going to be a picture um, forward um, as well too and so this is from Exodus um, 17 and um, this is um, so in this scenario um, Moses is leading the people of Egypt he's he's already um, he, he's leading the people of Israel out of Egypt they've already come out of Egypt and now they're traveling through the desert and the Bible says they're actually traveling through what is called the desert of sin <laughs> and um, uh, totally symbolic for, for us too right like before we came came to Jesus we were we were living in, in sin be it before Jesus came and he redeemed us there was no hope we were lost we were in the desert of, of, of sin and it says that they were thirsty that they were exhausted they felt like they were going to die if they didn't get something to drink if they didn't have something to quench their thirst and so what does god do to quench our thirst he tells moses he says moses i want you to go to the rock and i want you to strike the rock and when moses strikes the rock the rock splits mm -hmm. and water pours out of it, that that rock and so you can see that what God has done is he has sent his son, Jesus, who is the rock. If you read the Psalms at all, you, you would know that um, David is constantly referring to Jesus as our rock, our fortress, our stronghold. He is the, 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 the rock. But he, Jesus was broken. And you think even on the um, night where they took communion and, and, he, and he takes the bread and he says, this is my body, which is broken. That rock was split. His body was broken. And out of that flowed the water. And that water was our sustenance. It was life. It was what we needed so that we could live. Mm. And that's what Jesus has done for us he's providing that water where his blood and water flowed out from his side and 
When Jesus says, it is finished, it is a done deal. Mm -hmm. Listen, you are who God says you are. You are the righteousness of God now in Christ Jesus. You've been forgiven of every single sin. You are a saint in his eyes. You are holy in his sight. You are dearly loved. You are a child of God. And we need to receive those things. It is a gift. It's what he gives to us. And it's in receiving those things freely, not from a place of, oh, I'm not good enough or shame and all this stuff. It's like, no, we receive it because the rock cannot be struck again. When the Israelites were thirsty again in the desert, Moses was angry and he was told to speak to the rock, but he struck it twice. And God had to discipline Moses and said, you cannot go into the promised land because you did not honor what I told you to do as being holy. And so listen, what God has said, the rock can only be struck once, mm. once, and it's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Why don't you pray for us, yeah, hon? so let's pray. Dear mm. Jesus, we thank you that you are the rock that, uh, that we stand upon, mm. and you are the rock that was, that was struck. You are, the, um, you are the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Mm. And Father, we receive all that you've done for us on the cross right now. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. We uh, thank you that you, by your Holy Spirit, will enable us to walk in your ways mm. and that we can always um, be with you because you have told us you will never leave us or forsake us. And so, Jesus, we thank you so much for the work that you've done on the cross. And we pray that you would uh, bless our, our reflection today of your work on the cross and help us to understand even further what you have done and what you are doing and what you will continue to do in our hearts and lives and in this world. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless you all. We'll see you Sunday.